How long have we actually How known long? each other? Alex don't remember this, but I'm a blues fan, obviously. You yeah. had a little stint at Birmingham Ladies. I did. So I've known you for a little while. <laughs> I yeah. think we're both kind of the same environment yeah. where we grew up, a council estate. Yeah. And actually not hiding the fact that it's not a sub story. Yeah, It's exactly. like made yeah. us what we are today. It's like made us tough, but an element of that was having to be tough mm -hmm. and hide those emotions. Yeah. So what was it like for you growing up? With my dad, it was very much that. Mm -hmm. You don't show your emotion. Mm -hmm. You hide everything. You don't cry because yeah. that's weakness. When I look back, there's so many different elements that I think I went through. Dealing with that, yes, I'm that girl that wanted to play football mm -hmm. and my mum's friends all laughing at her, being, don't worry, she'll grow out of it. Yeah. I was brought up single parent family, so it was always a struggle anyway. Yeah. And having to prove myself more, I would say, because I was that kid that weren't going to amount to much. Yes, and I yeah, never yeah. wanted to be that statistic or that stereotype. But that's still there now, them. right? Yeah. I could tell, yeah. Because I feel like I'm just constantly having to prove people wrong. Is that because you're a woman or is that because you're a black woman or both? I think both, Yeah. to be honest. Okay. But and that's why it goes back to the, it's never a sob story with me because mm -hmm. actually it's made me the person I am. I know you've obviously had a lot of yeah. uh, instances on, on social media, but I try to stay away from it because I can't handle it the way you handled it. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was an issue and I was like, look, yeah. if you need anything, I'll look after you. You're, you're doing the right thing. Just keep keep on that path. Yeah, no, yeah. That, and that, actually it was that that led me into therapy. Mm -hmm. And then it was all the trolling and everything sitting mm -hmm. on TV, the death threats that I was receiving. And I, like I was losing my personality. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, I don't want to do this or yeah. my family, what they're going through. Then I realized talking about it, not mm -hmm. hiding it, how my mum would feel, my family. And actually like you, there's people like you reaching mm -hmm. out that wanted to help me. Yeah. But me not telling anyone they didn't know they didn't know no, they course. could help me yeah, until i yeah. actually spoke about it for me i stay off social media because when people say certain words and certain things it takes me back to my past days of being more aggressive yeah from the age of like 18 90 20 21 i was a proper loose cannon mm -hmm. like i was fighting all the time getting into scrapes I was just in a bad place. I was drinking five days a week, clubbing four days a week, and I'm playing at Watford at this point. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it was stupid. But then when I went to jail, I had to do a therapy course. And it's only really when I came out of jail and I did a lot of like therapy, and I'm mm -hmm. still doing therapy, that I've realized that I don't talk. And people go, you never shut up. But you know, <laughs> yeah. I just don't talk at home. So when I have an opportunity to talk and have conversations now, I, I grasp it and it's kind of my own therapy, yeah. getting it all off my chest and, and I feel lighter for it. But how do you feel with that? You know, I, I'm even just sitting here talking to you, I love that you're just so open <laughs> about even saying the word therapy mm -hmm. because I think I've been on that journey too. It's interesting when you talk about your drinking and everything. Mm -hmm. I was that footballer where when I retired, going into getting trolling, I found that I was turning to drink oh, more okay. to try and hide everything, hide mm. what I was feeling. I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell my mum because I didn't want her to worry or put that stress on anything. I'm very much that person. Like, I can look after myself. Like, mm -hmm. I can deal with stuff. But then, obviously, sometimes that's the wrong way. I got to a dark place and it was over Christmas. That's when I was like, I can't carry on like this. This mm -hmm. is not me. I, I need to seek help. Yeah. And that actually led me into therapy. So now I say it like you, it's yeah. so blase and mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm, I'm used to talking now where I used to hide all my emotions and mm -hmm. everything. And I think that's the stigma when we talk about mental health. I've had different types of therapy. So therapy to stop myself from drinking. Mm -hmm. But then I've got like trauma therapy from like events that have happened as kids. But I understood that when I started speaking, I slept easier. So I used to live on like four hours sleep. So I realized that when I started talking to people, I could sleep for five, six, seven hours. So now when I have a therapy session, I'll sleep like 10 hours afterwards. I'll go home and I'm knackered. But it's all the weight coming out of me. Yeah. And you'll probably understand that uh -huh. as well. And the mind is muscle. Exactly, well. yeah. So you need to work it. It needs to be trained. My whole big thing is I want to take that stigma away from it because I was mm. in that pool of, oh, talk about mental health. I'm fine. There was a stigma around it. But now when I talk about mental health, like straight away, like I'm smiling yeah, because yeah. I know what it's done for me to lead to that place of I'm content. I'm happy and I've used those tools, what I've learned to be in that place. And I feel like I want to give that to everyone else. Like, it's all yeah. right, you can get there too. <laughs>